Hello, it's Patricia Coglin, and I wanted to talk to you about a book I just finished that I think is absolutely terrific. It's called Think Again by Adam Grant. He's a social psychologist out of the University of Pennsylvania, and he's written some other terrific books like Originals. You know, what are the factors or the qualities of people who are original thinkers? So this one, Think Again, really warns us about a couple of dangers that I see very often in our profession. Um, I think it's, it happens in politics, it happens all over the place, which is our tendency to develop beliefs, right, to identify with those beliefs. And then when you're really attached to your belief about how something works, you know, say in psychotherapy, um, you can become vulnerable to two cognitive biases that can create a lot of trouble down the line. So the first is overconfidence. So if you really believe you have the answer, and you know what's going on here and how to fix it, um, you will start to gather data uh, to support that belief and you will discount or ignore contradictory evidence. So that is connected to this other cognitive bias, which is called confirmation bias. So we seem to be highly motivated to confirm our own beliefs. So these beliefs are ultimately very limiting, and they're going to undermine those qualities associated with the best therapist, which is curiosity, openness, flexibility. So if we're not going to develop and adhere to beliefs, right, what is the alternative? Well, the alternative is to understand and to keep in the foreground basic principles and values. So for example, the value of you know, human dignity and that we're all entitled to respect. And then these basic principles that we are trying to help our patients face truths and feelings that they have been motivated to avoid to their peril. And so these basic principles of creating and sustaining a really robust alliance with agreement about the problems, the goals, and the tasks. The basic principle of helping patients see and relinquish defenses that no longer serve them and, and often actually hurt them. The basic principle of helping patients recognize, experience, tolerate, and integrate their feelings. So if you are clear about the basic principles and the map, you're going to have lots of ways to get there and won't necessarily get so stuck in your belief that there's only one way. You know, there's interesting research from our field about, again, the best therapists. And regardless of what they call themselves, so whether they identify as a cognitive behavioral therapist or a psychodynamic psychotherapist, the best therapists from these different groups are much more alike in how they're intervening than other people within their particular model, okay? Why would this be? It's again because they adhere to basic principles and are open, curious, and flexible, able to use those principles to guide intervention with very different kinds of people. So we have to detach our identity from specific beliefs or schools and really identify with basic principles and values, right, that can guide us. In this way, rather than becoming a preacher, which is what he talks about when you're sure that you know, you know, the way, the truth, and the light, you've got these beliefs, is really to keep the scientific mindset in the forefront. 
Um, this is something I really appreciated about Dr. Davenlo when I trained with him. He was a scientist and he used every case as an N of one study. He would do a detailed phenomenological inquiry in order to gather data, right? Not assume he understood what you meant by anxiety or depression. He'd really dig into it, get the specific data. And from that data about what's happening, when, in what situation, he's gonna form a hypothesis, which he will then test out using the patient's response to each intervention to either confirm or refute that hypothesis, which would then have to change. You'd have to think again, right? You thought it was one thing and you find out it's another. So um, I really encourage you to read this terrific book and to develop a scientific mindset, not to get too attached to some of your own beliefs, but to be really clear about the guiding principles that uh, really form the foundation of your work with patients. So I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks. Bye-bye.